welcome, I'm Melinda Akinami. Tonight, leaders from Nigeria's southern and middle belt regions meet in Abuja, insist on the restructuring of Nigeria for faster development. The former Minister of Petroleum, Desiani Alison Madweke, named in fraud involving about $144 million worth of assets allegedly offered to her as bribe by two Nigerian businessmen. Tributes pour in as remains of Channel's television State House correspondent Chukuma Onwekusi are laid to rest. Thousands troop out to mark the first anniversary of a failed coup in Turkey. And on business news tonight, Securities and Exchange Commission sets August 20 as deadline for compliance on sponsored individuals and compliance officers. On sports news tonight, Spain's Garbin Muguruza overpowers Venus Williams to win her first Wimbledon women's singles title, beating the American 7-5 and 6-love in the final. We we'll begin tonight with the call for the restructuring of Nigeria, which appears to be increasing by the day. This time, some leaders from the southern and the middle belt regions have come together to take a common position on the matter at a meeting in Abuja. Those in attendance include elder statesman Edwin Clark, the former secretary to the government of the Federation, Olufalai, and the former minister of information, Professor Jerry Ghana. The spokesman of the Yoruba Social Cultural Group, Afeni Ferry, Mr. Yinka Odumaki, read the communique at the end of the meeting. We are resolutely of the view that the current federal structure is unbalanced, unjust, unfair, over-centralized, unstable, anti-development, and therefore unacceptable. Accordingly, we firmly support the demand to restructure the Federation in line with the recommendations of the 2014 National Conference to restore the country to the principles of federalism enshrined in the independence constitution negotiated by our founding fathers. For the Federation to function properly in the interest of the constituent parts, there should be fundamental devolution of powers and functions to the Federation units so that each federation unit can effectively serve the development interest of the people. This is the central essence of a good federation, not the current over-centralized of, over -centralization of powers and functions in the central government in Nigeria. Since these fundamental matters were considered and resolved at the 2014 National Conference, we urge the federal government to take appropriate and urgent steps to ensure the adoption and implementation of the resolutions of, and recommendations of the 2014 National Conference. Accordingly, we support the recent resolution of the National Assembly that the report of the 2014 National Conference be placed before it via a bill. Indigents of the federal capital territory Abuja are calling on federal lawmakers to consider granting the FCT the status of a state as they meet in Lagos to consider the amendment of the 1999 constitution. The president of the Original Inhabitants Development Association of Abuja, Mr. Danladi Jedi, told the town hall meeting that the current constitutional provisions, which recognizes a minister for the FCT, can no longer meet the needs of the people. For months, indigents of the federal capital territory Abuja have been on the streets protesting alleged marginalization of the original inhabitants of the city. Some of their demands include a request for the appointment of an indigent as minister of the federal capital territory. They will send the to go and protect their vote in 
At this town hall meeting in Abuja, the president of the original inhabitants of Abuja is calling on federal lawmakers to grant the FCT the full status of a state as they meet to consider amendments to the 1999 constitution. We no longer want a city-centered minister that focuses on developing elect districts while satellite towns and rural areas suffer. A restructuring based on devolution of the governmental powers from federal authorities to Abuja city authorities is what we ask for. Other members in the group also say they should be involved in the lawmaking process that govern the FCT. If the House of Assembly of the states will make law and make decisions and, 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 and input issues that are concerning their people, how comes it's other Nigerians that will come and decide for the people of FCT? Meanwhile, the representative of the senator for the federal capital territory assures the group that the lawmaker is putting some of these demands before members of the National Assembly at her committee on the alteration of the constitution. He is right there. Uh, being the representative, advancing two fundamental issues. One, the question of FCT indigents having a representative in the Federal Executive uh, Council, that is, uh, appointment of uh, FCT indigent as minister. Since the creation of the territory in 1976, no indigent of the Federal Capital Territory has been appointed as minister. This is a situation that many of those gathered here will be hoping the proposed amendments to the 1999 constitution will reverse. Nigeria's former Petroleum Minister Desiani Alison Madweke has been named in a U.S. civil case involving two Nigerian businessmen. The complaint, which was filed by the U.S. Justice Department, seeks to recover about $144 million in assets obtained through paying bribes to her. According to reports, two Nigerian businessmen, Kolawole Aluku and Olajide Omokore, allegedly conspired with others to bribe Mrs. Alison Madweke in order to win oil production contracts worth $1.5 billion. The money was then allegedly laundered in the United States and used to buy assets. When questioned about the missing public funds and corruption allegations, reports from Reuters says she denied any wrongdoing. In Kaduna State now, reports say gunmen have killed four herdsmen in Kajuru local government and destroyed properties in Chukun local government area. The National Secretary of Mieti Allah Kachu Breeders Association, Abdullahi Ibrahim, told journalists that the incident in Kajuru occurred after two Fulani indigents were abducted in the area. He described the attacks as unnecessary and appealed to his members to remain calm and called on security operatives to fish out the perpetrators. The police command is yet to confirm the incident. Meanwhile, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aodobe, says the federal government is seriously looking at ways to end the recent attacks by suspected Fulani herdsmen. He says the issue will form part of the agenda at the next ECOWAS meeting, where delegates will discuss grazing laws and the need to set up ranches. The minister was speaking at a meeting in Adoikiti, where Governor Ayodele Fayoshe asked him to match words with action. It has international complications, so we have put a motion before the next meeting of uh, heads of state of ECOWAS to discuss the matter. A lot of those cows are coming from West Africa, and we can't afford to have the continuation. But we're also encouraging Nigerians who want to grow cattle to go into ranching. Cows are not supposed to roam around the streets, and they're not supposed to walk into people's farms and eat them up. And finally, nobody is supposed to be killed on his farm or her farm by a headsman who just arrives with a weapon. So this is the issue. But we're, we're dealing with this so that when we finish, nobody can say that Nigeria took arbitrary decisions because of this ECOWAS treaty that allows people to walk back and forth across borders without even a visa. Even if the federal government wants to help us and we're not available, or we're towing the party lines, it's not going to help us. Everything they can do, that we can do, as long as the common man gets the benefit, that
Still story. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has reopened the Nyaya Motor Park three years after multiple blasts forced disclosure. The park was reopened after necessary security measures were put in place and to ease the difficulty faced by commuters. Residents of the area expressed delight at the reopening. On April 14, 2014, two bombs exploded at this bus park during the rush hour, killing at least 70 people and injuring over 100 others. The bus park is located in Nyanya, some 8 kilometers southwest of the Federal Capital Territory. It was shut down after the incident. It's been three years now and the park is back in business. Commuters make their way into the buses in orderly fashion. They express their delight over the reopening. The seamless movement so far. Uh, each time we came here, we are given our tickets. We just buy it at the entrance, 100 Naira, from here to Area 1 or Bega. Uh, we feel secured and uh, comfortable because um, the dropping and picking of passengers has been very orderly. The park, which is wearing a new look, is heavily guarded by a combined team of security personnel. Other security measures, like closed-circuit cameras, were put in place to forestall any reoccurrence, one after the other. The commuters were subjected to security checks before accessing the park. Before you enter into the park, they must scan you, check what you enter, what you carry. If you look at the main entrance, you look at, they will check your car before you enter into the park. So for now, we don't have anything, any problem here. Motorists were restricted to the park as no vehicle is allowed to pick and drop commuters outside the park. The commuters are hoping that the security measures are sustained in the long run. From Abuja, let's move to Kwara State now, where traditional rulers of two communities where violence recently broke out are still trading words and they are not willing to bury the hatchet despite government's intervention. The traditional rulers from both communities have been answering questions from officials of the Judicial Commission set up by the Kwara State government. The communities in Okeru, local government area of Kwara State, have lived together peacefully for decades. But that relationship has gone sour after last month's clash that claimed the lives of three people and saw several houses burned. Now the state government is investigating the root cause of the clash. The commission of inquiry led by the state chief judge, Suleiman Kau, in its first assignment paid a visit to the two communities where the team met with the traditional rulers. That meeting again started another round of blame game. The monarch of Oduawa, who is the most senior of the two, blames the traditional ruler at Ilofa for breaking the norms and tradition of the land by ordering the sale of new yam without his consent. It was quarter after six. I saw the eight, two bags of yam. We do arrange a four, 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 four A, four A, without any seller, no buyer. Nobody stands by the yam. I didn't talk to the Omana people that just they were coming in to the market. I went to the two gates that enter the market from Odowa A. I left the place with confront. Telling my people that there is abominable things here. And then the team moved to Ilofa, where a representative of the king blamed the monarch of Odowa for attacking the market women leader when she went to the market to sell the new yam. In an attempt to celebrate the new yam festival, and the Kabyasi Yalofa of Ilofa took his yams to the market, and uh, a lot of Odowa just came to the market with no shoes on him, with uh, this unripe uh, palm, palm front tied on his neck and on his head, and he scattered the yam. And in the process, he slapped the yellow jar of Ilofa, that what right has she to be selling yam in the market? And after hearing from both parties and assessing the level of damage done, the commission has this to say.
So we have come and uh, we have seen. We've gone around all the uh, locations where houses were destroyed and properties were destroyed. Now we have taken note of all of them. All right. We want the people of Ilofa and Udowa communities to forward their memorandum to the commission so that the commission can take the appropriate action. But what the people of the two communities are asking for is justice in the end. They hope that when the commission of inquiry finally submits its report in a month's time, the truth will manifest and lasting peace will return to the two communities. In part two after the break, INEC denies halting Dino Milaye's recall process as a result of the Senate's decision to probe Ted Fund. That's in a moment. Join us again. <laughs>